morning again. Now let's open our Bibles to the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 4. And today we'll be reading two verses, verses 3 and 4. Colossians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. When you found it, let's all rise together in the reading of the Word of God. This is God's Word. At the same time, pray also for us that God may open to us a door for the Word to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear which is how I ought to speak. This is God's Word. May God bless you with his word. Have you ever locked yourself out of your house? You forgot your keys. Maybe you're a young kid and you are a latchkey child. And you forgot to take your keys with you and no one is home. What do you do when you are locked out? Well, Maybe not all of us might have that kind of experience, but I think something maybe more relatable is when you're trying to find the bathroom, but all you can find are closed doors. There's no bathroom open to the public, right? Especially nowadays, try to find the bathroom. It's almost impossible. And ironically, or coincidentally, today, if you did not know, the bathrooms are unavailable. There's a water main break or water main problem on the other side, so there is no bathroom. So if you need to use the bathroom, yeah, it's not going to be here. Um, it just doesn't flush, so if you don't mind, yeah. But I think you all know this feeling of the urgency of needing to find an open bathroom, right? And sometimes it's life-threatening, right? You feel like you are in danger of serious, serious, uh, yeah, a calamity. But this is the thing. Paul is basically now asking for prayer, right? This is the Apostle Paul. And the Apostle Paul is not ashamed of asking for prayer. And it's very interesting what the Apostle Paul asks for prayer. And he says, pray, to, pray also for us that God may open to us a door for the word. Now, some of you might think of this as the Apostle Paul is praying for his jail cell to be opened. Because if you uh, know, most of the time when he was writing his letters, he was in prison. And he was often in prison. And so you might gather, you might think perhaps the Apostle Paul is asking for prayer that the jail cell would be opened for him and that he would be released. But I don't think that is the case, actually. And there are many reasons why we can see this. Actually, the first time where we see that literally an open door for his jail cell is um, given is in Acts chapter 16, 25 through 31, where the Apostle Paul was in Philippi and he was in jail. And about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bonds were unfastened. Now you might think that this is the obvious answer to Paul's prayer, a prayer like this, that God would open the door. But if you notice, that was not the door the Apostle Paul took in Acts chapter 16. The Apostle Paul did not take that chance to escape but there was another open door that the Apostle Paul was waiting for. You see, when the jailer woke and saw that the prison doors were open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. 
But Paul cried with a loud voice, "Do not harm yourself, for we are all here." And the jailer called for lights and rushed in. And trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. And then he brought out, them out and said, "Sirs, what must I do to be saved?" And they said, "Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved." You. In your household, you see, in Acts chapter 16, the apostle Paul was not looking for a literal door to open to release him from prison, but the apostle Paul instead was looking for the open door to preach the good news of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. This. Man who was guarding his jail cell. His heart was opened because of those opened jail cells. His heart was the heart that was open to the gospel. And you see, in in fact, the apostle Paul knew that because of the gospel, he would have to suffer many things. You see, even when Jesus calls Paul to ministry, the the apostle Paul, what Jesus says that he would suffer, Jesus says that Paul would suffer, and Paul would know this. And actually, in many times, the apostle Paul was told by the Holy Spirit that in every city, imprisonment and infliction afflictions would be. Waiting for him. This is what the apostle Paul testifies in Acts twenty verses twenty two through twenty three. So the apostle Paul knew that he was going to be imprisoned many times, and he was going to be afflicted many times. But this was all part of his call. And he knew it. So it would seem to be odd if this was what Paul was looking for—that the apostle Paul was simply wanting to be freed from his cell. But if that was us, if that were you, wouldn't you think it would be easier for you to preach or to share the gospel outside of prison? I think just personally, we don't like inconveniences, right? You don't you don't like having no access to a bathroom. You don't like long lines. You don't like traffic. You don't like slow internet. Inefficient coworkers or、uh, classmates. You see, for most of us, we all try to make our lives easier, right? That's how we make our purchases, right? The things that you buy, you don't buy things so that it would make your life more difficult. We buy things, we do things to make our lives more convenient. Who takes the longer way, the more difficult way, the harder way, when there is an easier way? <laughs> God bless you. But when it comes to following Jesus, the wide and easy way is the way that leads to destruction. This is not the way of the cross. The path that you must take in order to follow Jesus is straight and narrow. There will be many challenges that you will have to face, for the sake of the gospel. But are you ready for such a challenge? Are you ready to be inconvenienced by the gospel? Are you ready to endure hardships for the gospel? What are the sacrifices that you are willing to make for the sake of Jesus's 
message, the good news. It is very important for us to understand that. Because you see, for the Apostle Paul, it would have been very easy for him to get out of those chains, to get out of prison. You know what he needed to do? He just needed to stop preaching. If he stopped preaching the message of Jesus, he would not be in prison. It would have been very easy for him to get out just by not preaching. We saw that was the same for the Apostle Peter. He kept being thrown back into prison. And when he'd get out, what would he do? He would do the very same thing that he was charged with, that he was thrown into prison for. He was preaching the name of Jesus. And they would not stop because of Jesus. You see, the Apostle Paul, he may have been in chains, physical chains. And as far as the Roman government was concerned, the Apostle Paul was their prisoner, but that was not the case for Paul himself. You see, the Apostle Paul was bound by his commission to preach the gospel. And as far as the Apostle Paul was concerned, he identifies himself as a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 3, 1, 4, 1. The Apostle Paul says he is a prisoner of the Lord. You see, he does not shrink away from preaching the gospel because it's going to be difficult, because it's going to be hard. Instead, he asks people like you to pray for him so that he would be bold in spite of his chains. Ephesians 6, 18 through 20. You see, the Apostle Paul was in chains, but the gospel would never be held down. This is what he says in Ephesians 6, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication, and to that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints and also for me that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. You see, the Apostle Paul knew the need for prayer, and he He depended on people to pray for him. And he was asking for the churches to pray for him. But you see, this is the reason why the Apostle Paul was so bold. Because even though the Apostle Paul was in chains, the word of God would never be chained. The word of God would never be bound and held down. 2 Timothy 2, 8 through 9. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David, as preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering, bound with chains as a criminal. But the word of God is not bound. Do you believe that? That nothing can stop the word of God. That the good news of Jesus must go forward to the ends of the earth. And it will be proclaimed till the end when God's kingdom comes. You see, the Apostle Paul is commissioned to preach the gospel But when we read Colossians 4, chapter 3, 
and 4. We see that all Christians are called to pray for the work of the gospel. The church must learn how to pray as Jesus taught, Thy kingdom come. You must learn to pray for the preaching of the gospel. You must learn to pray for it to pierce the hearts of those who are still lost. You see, the Apostle Paul Paul does not ask the Colossians to pray for an open door for him to walk through, but he wants, the Apostle Paul desires for the Colossians to pray for an open door for the Word of God. It is to join together in the work of making the Word of God fully known. This is the call of every Christian. Now, the Apostle Paul doesn't just say this and speak about it lightly. He actually shows it by example. And there are many examples that we could see, but I'll just read the one we find in this same book. Colossians 1, 26 through 29 the mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to his saints, to them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil, struggling with all his energy that he powerfully works in me. This was the Apostle Paul when he was working and teaching, but he also requested the, actually he would also be praying for the Colossians. I actually wrote down the wrong passage if you were paying attention, but it was where the Apostle Paul was praying for the Colossians. And he says, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Because we always pray for them. He's always praying for them. The Apostle Paul is not only asking them to pray, but he is doing this himself. He never met the Colossians. But once once he knew that they were receivers of the gospel message. He could not stop praying for them. He was constantly praying for them. And he was saying that this is what he toils in and he struggles with all his energy so that Christ would be made known. Dear friends, this should be your desire. The desire of this prayer is that Christ would be made known. Do you want Jesus to be made known among the nations? Or do you want his name to be tarnished? Do you want his name to be hidden and put under a basket? instead of being like a lamp that shines in the darkness. You see, the desire of this prayer is that you would want everyone to fall in love with Jesus Christ. You would want everyone to know just how great his saving power truly is. That if all those who are lost would be found that all of heaven would rejoice. And this would be the desire of your prayer, that all of heaven heaven would have reason to rejoice because one that was lost was found. It would be the desire of your father that those who are lost would be found. 
you would want Jesus to be made great. This is what you would desire if you would pray for this gospel. If you would pray for Jesus' name to be carried to the ends of the earth. You see, the Apostle Paul writes in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1, Finally, brothers, pray for us that the word of the Lord may speed ahead and be honored. Is that what you desire? That the word of God would speed ahead. It would be unhindered in its progress and that it would be honored by all those who hear it. And he continues in this passage, that the word of the Lord may speed ahead and be honored as happened among you. So then what is your view of this gospel? Is this the greatest news that you ever heard? Do you cherish it? Do you honor it? then you should pray for it. You should pray that it would go forth to the nations, that the word of the Lord Jesus Christ would be made known. You should pray that the gospel would go to your neighbors, to your classmates, your coworkers, and those in your family who are still lost. The prayer, this prayer is for an open door but this door, this open door is nothing less than for Jesus Christ to open the heart of a sinner. Yes, it's like people, it, like me or you or missionaries that God uses, weak people like me. But ultimately what we are seeing is that this is Christ opening the heart of the sinner. Yes, we are ambassadors who proclaim the message, but Christ is king. And all that we are doing is sip simply setting up that meeting, that invitation. And I believe this is captured for us most clearly in Revelations chapter 320, where Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him and he with me. The gospel is bigger than any messenger. Any person, any missionary, evangelist, or pastor, the gospel is about nothing less than Jesus Christ knocking at the door of your heart, wanting for you to open and that you would believe. Have you ever thought about what will happen to that person if their heart is closed to Jesus and it stays closed? But what if they never hear the good news? They've known you for many, 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 many years, but they've never heard the good news. How will they believe? How can they be saved if they've never heard? The Apostle Paul prays and he calls all of you to pray. All believers are to pray that the mystery of Christ would be made known, that it would be made clear. Yeah, and that's a side thing I would mention. If you think my sermons are unclear, then I think you need to pray for me more. But this is a challenge I want to give to you. 
Where in your life do you need for the gospel to take root? Who do you know that needs to know Jesus? Is there someone that your heart is aching for? Because they do not believe in Jesus, then you need to pray for the word of God. Now maybe you may not be the person that can bring that gospel to them, but that you would continue to pray for it, that the word of God would pierce their heart. And perhaps it is you that needs to bring that message, but you must pray. How do you pray for this good news in the work of missions? You know, we have great opportunities for this because we have a list of missionaries that we can pray for regularly. We have missionary Daniel and Hannah, Esther, Chuck and Nikki, Daniel, Danny and Kathy, Scott and Helen, Hyosung, Kim, Yuni, Ko, Damon and Youngmi Cha, Inju and Sarah Huang, Park Sun Jang and Yang Eun Sun Suk Yoon. We have a list of missionaries that you could pray for regularly. Do you pray for your church? And I'm not just talking about pastors. I think, at least, I hope you know you're praying for the pastors. But do you pray for the teachers of your children? In the education department, the Bible study teachers, the small group teachers, which also happens to be pastors right now in EM, but not in KM, that you would pray, that you would pray for the word of God. And the thing is, if you are not praying, then generally, it's because you really need to think again in how good is that good news to you? How great is that good news? Let us pray for open doors. If you are sitting here and you have not yet opened your heart to the good news of Jesus Christ, then you must hear that Jesus is knocking, calling to you to believe. But if your heart has been opened to Jesus, and you know what it means when he washes you of your sins, all of your sins, and you could see just how beautiful he is in your life, Should you not pray that his good news would be made known? Should you not be praying so that the mystery of Christ would go forward? Perhaps maybe God is calling you not just to pray about this, but to go. That you too would go. Now, that doesn't always mean you have to be a full-time ministry. Perhaps that means you need to just share the good news with someone, to invite someone to church, just say to them, do you want to come to church with me? Perhaps you are also called to go do the work of a teacher, to teach the good news to young children in our church, to go on the work of missions, to proclaim that Jesus is King. What is your view of the gospel? Is it the greatest news? Then pray. Pray for the word that it would speed forth and that it would be honored. Let us pray.